Hey friends, it's Carly. Welcome back to my kitchen. It is time to cook, as it usually is when you come to see me. Um, <clears throat> tonight I am going to be doing another budget friendly dish that takes very few ingredients um, and it's very filling and it's it's a pasta dish so everybody loves that unless you're watching your carbs sorry we're not so um, the first thing I'm going to do is for well, I should tell you what we're making we are making cacio e pepe which is essentially it's it, it translates to pasta and pepper so two of the main ingredients are going to be pasta. So the first ingredient, the ingredient should be linguine, uh, fettuccine, a long noodle of some type. Um, so whatever your preference. I would go through for a thicker noodle like a fettuccine or a linguine as opposed to an angel hair pasta. It just, um, the sauce soaks into the pasta a little differently when it's a larger noodle. Um, you of course are going to need some salt and pepper so have that on hand. Uh, you are going to need some Parmesan Romano cheese, uh, about two, three ounces of cheese, more if you like cheese, because you know how I feel about cheese. It every, makes everything better. Uh, you're going to need a lemon um, that freshens everything up. It makes everything really bright. Um, it is a pasta dish that we're doing tonight, but it's not a heavy pasta dish. Uh, where I am right now, it's actually like 100 degrees outside, so that's not necessarily the time that you want to have a really heavy, heavy meal. Um, so this lemon actually lightens it up. It's not a heavy tasting dish. Um, we are going to be doing some bacon. Um, the bacon is more for a topping, so I'm going to be frying up some bacon to sprinkle over the top. Of course, bacon makes everything better as well. Uh, my thoughts are chocolate cheese and bacon. If it's good, add one of the three of those and it's even better. Not necessarily in that order. Um, <clears throat> you're going to need about a pound of zucchini. Um, I have two medium-sized zucchinis, so that should probably be enough for you. You are going to need about four tablespoons of butter or margarine um, or any vegan substitute that you might want. Um, and you will need about two cups of peas. I'm going to be using the frozen variety today because I happen to have that on hand. You could definitely do um, you could definitely do fresh peas if you would like to. If they are in season around you, if they are on sale, definitely grab uh, some of those. I, I prefer to cook with fresh ingredients as opposed to frozen, but sometimes you know we have to kind of go with what we have on hand as well. So I am going to take you through how to, uh, how to create this amazing dish. Um, it is a crowd pleaser. Everybody absolutely loves it. Um, serve it with a little cold salad on the side, or if you, you know, if you're into baking bread, it's great to bake some bread. Again, we're not watching our carbs here. So stay with me. I'm going to show you how to throw this together really quickly. Okay, friends, I am back. The first thing I'm going to do while I'm heating my pan on the stove um, for my bacon, I am going to slice up my vegetables. I'm going to uh, slice my zucchini with my rapid prep mandolin. I've used this before, absolutely love it. Keeps your hands away from the blade. Chops and slices and juliennes and fry cuts in like two seconds. So I'm gonna use my santoku knife. The way I'm gonna prepare this is just cutting the ends off. Remember to save these ends. Um, put them into your stock bag to make stock, um, whether you make chicken stock or veggie stock. Um, anything that you've got, you don't throw away things that have still have value and you don't throw things away that still have flavor and those have flavor. So do not throw those away. Now, I'm, uh, I just kind of cut these down into halves, they're like half moons, and I'm gonna pop them into my rapid prep mandolin. Um, and I have the back of this set at chop and I am just gonna chop these into like maybe they're maybe a quarter of an inch thick um, so it's just gonna go super quickly now if you're chopping these um, for soup um, you might want to cut these down into fourths unless you like to have a real hearty and rustic soup if you are um, cutting these down um, you know to, to saute or something you can leave them larger um, you definitely want to keep them thick enough um, that the integrity of the vegetable stays intact. 
because the thinner you go, the faster they cook. It's important to slice things evenly um, at an even thickness, just like we're doing here with the pre uh, rapid prep mandolin, because if they're different thicknesses, they're gonna cook differently. And then you're gonna have one that's like mush and gross and then one that's still not cooked all the way through. And then when you serve them, it's just not as appealing. So. Um, my zucchini is all chopped. Now, what I'm going to be doing with the lemon is actually taking the zest. Um, if you have never worked with citrus zest before, you don't know what you're missing. Um, it's, it's free flavor. You already bought the lemon. Of course, you're going to use the lemon and other things, juice it, you know, for, for your recipe or whatever. But all of this yellow around the outside, and this is true also for oranges and um, grapefruit, all of the zest is that beautiful color on the outside and it carries all of the oil of the fruit. That oil has so much flavor in it, you don't want to throw that out if you don't have to. So you're going to need a zester or microplane grater, um, even a fine grater if you don't have anything else. And I'm just going to run the lemon over my my um, my zester here and you'll see that I'm just taking off enough um, you can see it's very yellow here and it's just lighter yellow. You want to stop before you get to the white part of that pith. The pith of the fruit or the citrus is very bitter. Now, it's not to say it's not good. There are people who, you know, eat the entire orange, people who eat the entire lemon. Um, you can also candy lemon peels, orange peels. They're delicious in cakes. Um, you can put them into various batters and things like that, but those are usually sweetened. But for this particular recipe and other recipes that I've done, I am not using the pith because I'm not interested in that bitter flavor. All I want is that pungent lemon flavor so, um, so I can put that over my pasta. So you can see this beautiful zest that we have here. Isn't that gorgeous? We are going to sprinkle that over the pasta as well once it is finished. So that's all the prep there is for my vegetables. I just uh, measured out two, um, two cups of my peas, no prep there whatsoever, unless you have, you know, if you have to shell your own peas, if you get them from the farmer's market, market, but you're gonna need about two cups of those. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna head over to the stove and I am going to start cooking up the bacon. The bacon, again, is going to be a nice crispy, crunchy topping for our amazing pasta dish. So stay with me, we'll be over at the stove in just a minute. Okay, friends, here we are over at the stove. I am preheating my rock crock Dutch oven um, over medium heat right now. It is starting to get warm. And the first thing I'm going to do, I'm gonna try and make this um, a one pot dish. So I'm going to make my bacon first so that I can set it aside so it's ready to crumble over the top of our uh, cacio e pepe after we are finished cooking it, then we don't have to wait on the bacon. Now I have a great cooking hack for you. My hack is our kitchen shears. Now, if you are doing um, meats that you're just going to be, you know, kind of sprinkling over top something um, that don't need to be completely intact, meaning I am not cooking the bacon in full strips, I'm just cooking little chunks. A lot of people would tend to cook the bacon and then chop it up afterwards. Well, it doesn't need to be like that. Grab a pair of nice sharp kitchen scissors and just cut it up so that it's crumbleable as soon as, as it is nice and cooked. And of course, you're gonna cook your bacon to your specific liking. Um, my family is different. Uh, every single one of us likes our bacon different. I don't know if that's the same for every other family. Like, I'm a crunchy bacon kind of girl. Um, I like my bacon to be, I mean, not cremated, but, you know, like, I like it to be crispy. I, I want a crunchy bacon. Um, my uh, youngest son is really into the crispy bacon. Um, my older son is into not-so-crispy bacon, but not raw, of course, as well. Now, you'll hear that this is starting to sizzle. 
Um, I do have to wash my hands, obviously, but I'm just gonna move this around um, and let this cook down. Now, depending on the heat of your stove and all of that, you don't want this to scorch. So I would recommend keeping this at a medium to medium high heat. Um, if you turn it too high, things will start to stick to your rock crock pan. So don't go so high that things start sticking to it because nobody's got time for sticking, right? Like that's not what we're about right now. So I'm gonna move this around in my pan. I'm just gonna cook this down to my liking and then I'm going to scoop it out. Um, and uh, I have another trick for you coming up. I'll give you a hint. It has something to do with the grease of the bacon. I should turn on like the Jeopardy theme right now so y'all can think about that. But right now I'm gonna cook this down and I'll be right back to show you what to do with the grease. Welcome back, friends. You can see that my bacon is looking fabulous. I'm gonna turn this down. Well, actually, you can't really see because it's all foamy in there, and that foam is fat. And fat, as we know, equals flavor. So, we're talking about being budget-friendly, right? So we're not going to waste all of that fat. Now, we don't need all of that immediately for the dish that we are doing right now. But what I'm going to do is take my spider strainer. Um, you can use a slotted spoon if you don't have a spider strainer. Um, rock crocks get hot, so if you're going to touch the sides of the rock crock, please make sure that you have some kind of uh, mitt, oven mitt, or a towel, or something to protect your beautiful little hands. Um, now the spider strainer, we actually just got the spider strainer not too long ago. It came out in our spring and summer 2022 line. I have been coveting and wanting a spider strainer for the longest time. So I was super, maybe I was more excited than I should have been, I don't know. But I was super excited for the spider strainer. Now, that um, I'm just letting this kind of uh, crisp up and cool a little bit um, on a paper plate lined with some paper towel. Um, and I'm gonna set this aside for when we are finished with our dish. And that will be sprinkled over the top. Now, here's my little food hack. Do you see all of this goodness in here? Do you see all of that? Ladies and gents, save it. Put a little, get a little mason jar. Put, um, put one of the funnels in and just put it into the jar just like that. Now, this is great for making your eggs in the morning. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna allow this to cool. Um, I'm gonna allow this to cool um, on the countertop and you know for a couple hours so that it's not absolutely steaming hot. And then I'm going to screw the lid on and then I will have this for my eggs. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do is I am going to wipe down my rock crock and then we are going to get started on our pasta. Stay, stu stay tuned. Welcome back, friends. Um, there is nothing magical about this part. This is just making pasta. So um, the first thing you're gonna wanna do, um, I'm again, I'm doing a one pot dish. Um, if you wanna use multiple pots, you can do this all simultaneously. Boil the water, make the bacon, you know, but that's more cleanup. So that's why I'm doing it this way today, because I hate cleaning up. First thing you're gonna wanna do, salt, your pasta water, friends, if you are not salting your pasta water, you're not doing it right. Your water should taste like something. So if you, uh, part of the reason is because you want your pasta to taste like something. You will not, you know, you don't need like an entire, you know, pound of uh, kosher salt in there or anything, but you want it to taste like something. So um, this is my beautiful linguine. I'm just gonna kind of pop it right in there most of it anyway the rest of it's just going to kind of flop out of the pot because you know that's how it goes um and then you'll get you're going to want to use either tongs um or like a spaghetti or pasta uh spoon to kind of get things wiggled down in there of course you can break these in half if you want um to get them down in the pot you know right away um but 
Um, I'm just gonna cook these down. Now I have linguine, so for uh, for me, it's gonna be somewhere between nine and 11 minutes. Um, you don't want your pasta to be too, you know, um, uh, to, uh, you want it to have a little bit of a chew to it, um, al dente. So you don't want it to be, you know, falling apart um, and really, ugh, you know, mushy and whatever. So I am going to just let this start uh, start going. Now, um, I'm not gonna show the rest of pasta boiling because it's like watching paint dry, right? But I will say I am going to boil this down nine to 11 minutes and I am going to reserve about a cup and a half to two cups of this pasta water. The pasta water, of course, that you salted. And what's gonna happen is some of that uh, starch is going to cook out of the pasta and it's going to give us a nice base for our sauce. We'll be able to use that, um, that uh, reserved pasta water to help make our sauce. So after I have um, cooked this down and I have strained it, we will be back for the next step. Stay tuned. Okay, friends, we are back here. We are going to start our sauce now. So the first thing I'm gonna start with is about four tablespoons of butter. Um, so once we get our butter in our pan, essentially what we want to do is start cooking it down. I forgot my spoon. <laughs> So I turned the heat down. Um, my pasta is actually in the sink right now. Well, not in the sink, but in the strainer. Um, and it is uh, straining out. I did add just a touch of olive oil and shook it around just to kind of keep the um, pasta from sticking to itself. Um, if it does, it's okay because it will be glazed with the sauce in just a few minutes. But, you know, it makes it easier to work with. So the first thing I'm gonna do, this is cacio e pepe, and pepe is pepper. So you are going to want, while your butter is melting and your pan is nice and hot, is put in a bunch of black pepper. Now, it's completely up to you how much you want. Um, the recipe calls for mm, about a teaspoon, um, but you can go more, you can go less. But putting that uh, black pepper into this not only flavors it, but um, it's its namesake. So when you put your um, seasonings into oil or butter um, in the pan and cook it right alongside while you're heating that butter and oil, the, um, the seasonings will open up and release their oils right into your pan. So it almost toasts them and it opens them up so that they're literally more flavorful than they would if you just sprinkled it over the top of your food um, while it's cooking. So I recommend putting the seasonings right into your oil um, or your pan as you are warming it up to bring those flavors out. Now my butter is basically melted here my pepper is in the pan so now i am going to throw in all this beautiful zucchini that we chopped with the rapid prep mandolin that's just been kind of chilling in the background um now we just want to cook this a bit we definitely don't have to like make this mush um because we do want it to have a little bit of texture so i will go ahead and let this kind of cook down probably three or four minutes um, until it is nice and cooked down. And then we are going to work on the rest of this. Basically, everything from here on out is just kind of throwing everything in here, creating that sauce um, with our cheese, our leftover water from our pasta. Remember to take that out. Don't forget that. That's really, really important. And then kind of putting everything together and then plating. And then it's time for dinner. I cannot wait. So I will be back here once my zucchini is cooked down and I will see you in a minute. All right, friends, we are back. And you will notice that my zucchini is cooking down. Um, it is a little bit less than fully cooked at this moment, but that's because I don't want it to overcook. So now I'm going to work on that gorgeous sauce. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna squeeze some lemon into this. This is that lightening, brightening um, flavor that is going to make this 
absolutely scrumptious and nice and light. Um, pro tip, leave a little bit of lemon on the side so that you can like lemon wedges and then squeeze it over top when you are finished. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish that. And that is a little bit of liquid for our sauce. Now, here is that beautiful cheese. Now, all I did um, was just grate that cheese um, using my adjustable fine grater. So we're gonna get that starting to get melty in there. The lemon is absolutely smelling beautiful. And this is starting to cook down. It's gonna thicken because that uh, cheese, as that cheese melts, it's going to act as a thickener. Um, so that's why we have this reserved pasta water. Um, we want it to be thin enough that it's gonna, it's gonna glaze our pasta really beautifully, but we don't want it to be so thin that it's, you know, just rolls right off of it. So I am going to stop there. Now, next thing I wanna add is my frozen peas. Now, these just kind of need to cook through. They just need to warm up um, so they don't need to, you know, have much time in the pan. But we're just gonna move these around and let this cook down for a few minutes. Then I am gonna go ahead and add my pasta and then we'll see what that looks like. So give me one moment, I'll be right back. All right, friends, we are cooked down. My sauce is looking lovely. So I am going to go ahead and put in my pasta. And then we're just gonna kind of work this in. Basically, the way that I like to do this is kind of scoop down to the bottom and then pull it to the top and keep going like that. You're gonna wanna make sure that your pan is on like a medium to medium and low, medium low heat because you don't want it to scorch to the bottom of the pan or overcook. Uh, we're just kind of combining all of our ingredients, glazing our pasta and getting those vegetables all incorporated into this beautiful dish. So the next thing we're going to do is plate this up and devour our dinner. So I will see you over at the counter in just a moment to plate this up. Stay tuned. Okay, friends, here we are. Dinner is ready. Now, all we need to do is slap this thing together. Um, my pasta is cooked beautifully, and we're just going to serve it up in our dish. Now, if you want to make your pasta kind of look, oh, I don't know, schmancy fancy, give it a little twist in the bowl, kind of make a little nest. And then I'm just going to put some of these zucchini up here and pull them up so we can all see it. How gorgeous. Now, I'm going to put a little bit of lemon zest that we zested earlier with my zester. Put that there, that's just extra flavor. Um, I am also going to grate a little bit more of our cheese right over top. Oh my goodness, this is gorgeous. So that is good. Don't forget about the bacon. Ain't nobody forgetting about the bacon, right? That's like amazing stuff. And a little lemon wedge. I'm gonna bring this up so you can see how amazing this looks. Can you see the gorgeousness? Isn't it beautiful? So ladies and gents, this is Cacio e Pepe. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoy this meal. Um, it is a kind of a summery pasta, and right now it's summer where I am. It's got those fresh vegetables. It's got those light hints of lemon um, that kind of brightens the flavor, and it's absolutely achievable. This is not difficult stuff. There is no magic involved. So make sure to give me a like and subscribe, share with your friends, and I'll see you next time. Bye.